Was NVIDIA potentially at risk at losing its number one spot? Not today, not tomorrow, but let's say five years down the line to a company like Grok, and they figure, why not just pay big now, shell out a big check, and then nobody can touch us. $20 billion. That's the number NVIDIA just put on the table. Not to buy a company for revenue, not to buy customers, not even to buy market share, but to eliminate a threat. In late December 2025, while markets were quiet and Silicon Valley executives were on vacation, NVIDIA quietly made the boldest move in semiconductor history. They didn't just outspend a rival, they outsmarted regulators, and they may have just locked up the future of artificial intelligence. Because this wasn't a normal acquisition. This wasn't growth. This wasn't expansion. This was a strategic kill shot. And Mackenzie, I, I sort of stopped short when I was reading about this. Maybe you can help explain because it called this a licensing deal, but then it said, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the CEO of Grok is going to go work for NVIDIA and that it's non exclusive. I'm like, well, what? Is this an acquisition or what is this? It's not an acquisition. They've been very specific in saying that. But this Grok deal came together in just a few days, and the structure. To your point, Kelly, tells you a lot about where this market is headed. So non-exclusive licensing agreement where NVIDIA gets Grok's IP and its founder, Jonathan Ross, who helped build Google's TPU. And that's the secret sauce of this deal. It matters because the TPU has become NVIDIA's most credible competition. Google stock is up 65 percent this year, and a big part of that is its vertical stack. Its in-house chip has helped land major cloud deals with Anthropic and Meta. And now the guy who helped design that architecture is going to NVIDIA instead. Now, as for what NVIDIA gets technically, the AI industry is shifting from training models to running them at scale. That's called inference, and it's where a lot of the future revenue is coming from. NVIDIA sees Grok's design as a way to own that next phase. And relative to its $4.6 trillion market cap, $20 billion isn't that big a bet. But the deal structure also matters here. Gil Loria at DA Davidson telling me that these contracts are often set up so that big VC investors get paid while employees may not get as much as in a traditional acquisition. And then there's NVIDIA's cash problem. It's sitting on $60 billion and has been looking to aggressively deploy it. $100 billion proposed for OpenAI, $5 billion into Intel, backing CoreWeave ahead of its IPO. So this deal lets them add inference capabilities while keeping a competitor off the board, which is really a win-win here, Kelly. Right, or keeping regulators off their cases, as it may be. I also read that this company makes LPUs, language processing units. And I, maybe I'm inventing the LPU moniker, but it said, again, that these are less compute intensive than GPUs. And it sounds like we're going to hear a lot more about these alternative forms that are meant more specifically to be used with AI models as opposed to just kind of the power hungry GPUs. Precisely. And semi-analysis actually put out a report this morning pointing to the fact that while the first generation of what Grok was producing uh, wasn't as competitive as NVIDIA's models, there are two more coming down the pike quite soon. And that uh, NVIDIA and Jensen Wong might have been reading the tea leaves there and wanting to get ahead of it, license their tech before AMD or Broadcom could get there. What's also interesting is the fact that Grok actually just slashed its 2025 revenue projections by 75 percent. So then you what? think, all right, well, what was the exactly? So what's the competitive advantage here? And it does come down to chip design. Grok's chips essentially keep data on the processor itself, which could help NVIDIA bypass a key bottleneck in the process, which is memory chip shortages and price hikes. So NVIDIA's GPUs rely heavily on high bandwidth memory and a supply chain controlled by just a handful of firms. This helps them get around that. Hmm. I wonder if that would have implications for Micron. But you said the company just slashed its own revenue forecast by 75 percent? Yeah, it, it did. Um, and I will wow. say this. I, I, this deal in particular also shows how hard it is to challenge NVIDIA, even with billions in VC funding. And we are seeing this wave of consolidation. So it's not just Grok. You've got Intel reportedly in talks to buy Samba Nova. Meta just acquired an AI chip company, Revos, in October and hired the team behind Untether AI, which also develops chips for running AI models. So we're just seeing a lot of movement here. Indeed, I appreciate you having all that. To understand the deal, you first need to understand the enemy. Grok wasn't just another AI chip startup. They were the rebels. Founded by Jonathan Ross, the same engineer who created Google's TPU, Grok was built on one dangerous idea, that NVIDIA's GPUs are no longer the best way to run AI. While the entire world was waiting months, sometimes nearly a year, to get access to NVIDIA H100 GPUs, Grok went in the opposite direction. Grok claimed that GPUs, the very chips that made NVIDIA a multi-trillion dollar empire, were becoming too slow, 
too expensive, and too inefficient for the next phase of AI. And here's the key part most people missed. Grok wasn't saying GPUs were bad. They were saying GPUs were overkill. NVIDIA's GPUs are designed for training massive models, huge bandwidth, massive parallelism, enormous power consumption. But inference, actually running AI, is a completely different game. Inference needs speed, not brute force. It needs low latency, not massive memory bandwidth. And it needs to be cheap, because inference happens billions of times per day. This is where Grok became dangerous. Grok's chips, their LPUs, were not just faster than NVIDIA's GPUs at inference, they were dramatically faster. We're talking hundreds of tokens per second, near instant responses, no lag, no waiting. And even more important than speed, they did it at a lower cost. Less power, less memory, less wasted computation. In simple terms, Grok could deliver better real-time AI for less money than NVIDIA. That combination is lethal, because if customers realize they can run AI faster and cheaper without NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA's dominance starts to crack, and the market noticed. Just three months before the deal, Grok raised money at a $6.9 billion valuation, an insane number for a hardware startup. BlackRock was in, Samsung was in, big money was lining up. Why? Because Grok wasn't just another competitor. They were attacking NVIDIA at its weakest point, inference economics. If Grok scaled, data centers wouldn't need as many GPUs. Cloud providers wouldn't need to pay the NVIDIA tax. AI agents could run faster, cheaper, and everywhere. That's not competition. That's an existential threat. And NVIDIA saw it. So they did what monopolies always do when innovation gets too close. They didn't fight it. They didn't out-engineer it in time. They didn't wait. They wrote a check so large the problem went away. And that's why NVIDIA made Grok an offer they couldn't refuse. And here's where this deal stops being about chips and starts being about NVIDIA stock. Because by buying Grok, NVIDIA didn't just remove a competitor. They removed the only credible threat to their future margins. Wall Street doesn't care about who has the fastest chip. Wall Street cares about who controls the profit pool. And inference is about to become the biggest profit pool in AI. And when Wall Street realizes that Nvidia just locked up, trust me, the stock won't just explode, it will literally reach the moon. Was Nvidia potentially at risk at losing its number one spot? Not today, not tomorrow, but let's say five years down the line to a company like Grok, and they figure why not just pay big now, shell out a big check, and then nobody can touch us. You know, Sazi, I was listening to an investor of Grok uh, on his uh, channel about wh why this is so interesting. And this is basically what he was saying is, is that NVIDIA is seeing the writing on the wall when it comes to specialized chips, because you played that uh, sound of Jonathan Ross talking about uh, the in inference technology that they have. And this is where uh, some are seeing that th where the money is at with these specialized chips and why NVIDIA would pay three times the value of this company. And by the way, Jonathan Ross is seen as a engineering genius within this industry. So yes, uh, it, it may be that it, the NVIDIA chips, which are generalized chips, which are good at many tasks, are great. But now where the money is being seen going forward, where the reoccurring money may be, is in this specialized chip space. And that's why they are b essentially uh, buying this company in this deal that, by the way, it's this licensing deal, which is an interesting also format for uh, these. Now we are seeing more and more of these types of deals where the talent goes to the uh, goes to now NVIDIA, where the, the company is still uh, is still sort of more of a shell company. And this is because of antitrust issues to make sure that this goes through. But yes, Jensen Wang may be admittedly saying we have a great chip, but now we are now acquiring this specialized chip with Jonathan Ross did the TPU over at Google. So uh, it's, it's definitely seen as where the market may be going.